Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Today's disturbing dreamscape, called Oblivion, brought to us by Murphy76, or Old Man Murphy of Wellhay Productions. I don't have much time left. I must recount my tale before my time is up, before I fade out of existence. The first thing I remember is waking up outside. It was snowing out and I was naked. I felt dozens of children's hands about my head and body rubbing my skin back and forth. I tried to run away, but my legs and feet were firmly planted under the snow deep into the ground. I tried to flail my arms, but they too were frozen, immovable. I was trapped. I had no way of escape, and I could only hope that one of these children would soon set me free. The children stood back and glared at me with awe and wonderment. They whispered things to each other as they continued to gape at my raw, naked form. I wanted to shout at them, beg for them to release me, but none heard my plea. One small boy approached me and looked with a wide, evil grin upon his cherub-like face. He got down on the ground on his hands and knees as another boy quickly climbed on his back and met me face to face. His look was quizzical and contemplative as if he wanted to do more to me, but could not decide on what to do. I closed my eyes in hopes that I could concentrate on a happy place while he performed his dastardly act. He grabbed my nose and twisted it around, jamming it back into my skull, but careful enough not to break it. The pain surged through my body as he twisted and shoved for what seemed an eternity. Then the boy plucked out each of my eyes and placed them back into my face in different locations. Miraculously, I could still see, but my vision has now been permanently skewed. He turned to his cohorts and reached for what I thought would be my undoing, but surprisingly, he presented me with a wool scarf and delicately wrapped it around my neck. It wasn't much, but the warmth was lovely. It was enough for me to concentrate on while I remained outside in the vile blizzard. He turned back to his fellow children and placed a tall black hat on my head as if to mock me. He jumped down and rejoined his comrades as they gazed at me once more. They jumped in jubilation as they finished their physical torture of my body, and just as quickly as it had ended, they simply left me. All of the children vanished into the blinding white snow. They have yet to return. Week after week, month after month, I stood there in my frozen solitude. The snow eventually cleared and I saw the children passing by, not giving me any notice. I saw other people casually walking past me. I tried to call out for help, but just like my captors, they could not hear me either. They could only see. Soon it began to grow warm. The scarf was no longer needed, but it was not removed. It only slid off of my neck down to my shoulders and thence to the ground. My nose, battered and bruised, slowly slid out of my skull and rolled down my chest, plopping onto the slushy mix that slowly began to rise around my feet. My eyes stayed firm, but now they're showing signs of fatigue. My spine has become deformed as I now slump over on my right side. The chilling pool of ice and water continues to rise. It looks as if it may consume the rest of me and I'll slowly drown. It's been months since I first remembered my incarceration. My left eye has completely fallen out now. The scarf swims around the pool that has reached up to my ears and I have come to terms with my fate. I calmly wait for my end and... I can only pray that the hereafter is much more forgiving than my short, frozen life. Thumpity, thump, thump. So stay scary, wildlings. Never underestimate the cruelty of children. 
even if it's unintentional, and make the most of your nights.